Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for making the time to attend this webinar today. I'm Marty Switzer, CEO of Contango Asset Management, and with me is Portfolio Manager Sean Burns. Uh, as everyone would know, global markets have been in free fall on the back of the coronavirus. Communities and economies have been completely disrupted across the globe, and the market has moved into bear market territory. The speed and magnitude of the pullback has been severe, and no investor has been spared. That said, the CIE share price so far has held up well compared to its peers. And at some point, uh, this will create an incredible buying opportunity like we saw back in the GFC. But the purpose of today's presentation is to share our view on the current global landscape. And Sean's got a deck here that he'll talk through. Um, we'll also go through how we're talking or how we're positioning the portfolio at present. And um, we'll also discuss where we see value in the future. But most importantly, we're here to answer your questions. This is your time. This is your webinar. This is your investment. And we, we want to make ourselves available to, to answer any questions you might have about the current landscape or, or, or what we're doing right now with regards to your to, to your money. Um, so Sean, let's let's kick it off. Um, you know, we had a 12-year bull market. Um, it was going to end eventually and, you know, it, it definitely has now. We're in bear market territory, which is referred to as a, as a, a fall of, um, of, of 20%. Um, have you been surprised though at how fast this has taken place. Is this is this the fastest boom um, bear market you've seen so far in your many um, years in our industry? Yeah, I, I suppose if you go back to '87, it fell 25 percent in a day. That yeah. was a, that was a big big um, shock. But the the market had gone up like a, a a skyrocket before that, and there was an awful lot of debt <clears throat> and expectation in there. But um, you know, when we look at the the probably over the last couple of decades. Um, the the fall the fall in this market has been um, very quick, you know, and you know we, I suspect that's due to a lot of financialisation of the industry, um, algorithmic trading, um, quant trading, etc., uh, where machines just uh, will sell sell very rapidly and, and build on that momentum. Um, and obviously ETFs as well is something that's been been yeah. spoken spoken about, and I guess the the role that that passive plays and um, obviously, when those sort of products, uh, it's time to get out. Um, the market's not spared, is it? No, that's right. And I suspect, you know, there'll be some leveraged products as well that will be, um, uh, you know, for sellers. Um, and you know, I think the the ETFs, if we see them, they will sell across. You know, they hold the old index; they'll sell across the board. So uh, you'll you'll see, um, you know, that, that selling replicate across the whole index. Um, Bernsey, hard question, but. Um, how long is this volatility going to stick around? Do you think there's more pain to come? Um, how long do you expect this bear market to last? There's a few questions here. When, when will we be at the bottom? Just yeah. to make it hard for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As someone says, picking bottoms is a messy business. Yeah. But it's like, um, I think that um, I, I've got some slides in the, in, the, um, in the deck which address it. I think what the markets are particularly worried about is the credit markets. Um, you know that, and um, what is going on there? And I think once we see stabilisation in the credit markets, it'll um, that will lead to um, a bottom in the equity markets as well. Um, we haven't seen it yet, um, and yeah, we're seeing um, corporate corporate loan spreads um, still uh, going up. Yeah, I mean they've had they have uh, yeah not not the yeah, other there's a couple of charts in the pack I can go through and, and discuss it, but I think that will probably determine. When and um, just how how far uh, you know how much economic dislocation is caused by by this thing over over the next next uh, you know few months we're going to see a big drop that's for sure and you know just how in activity um, you know we saw China's PMIs go down to 35 you know we've yet to see the US and and Europe how the market reacts to that we all know it's coming but when we actually see it. Um, and there will be earnings downgrades, I suspect, starting with the US uh, next month when they report. Now, we all know, the time, you know economic activity is, is tightened. It's just how the market reacts to when they start to see companies actually talk through it. Um, Sean, we've got a couple of charts and then we are getting questions. So that is the purpose of today is to, to answer questions from our, from, our, from our shareholders. But let's just sort of talk through. Uh, the current market landscape and um, no doubt a lot of people on the call would be sort of familiar with what's going on um, from a market uh, perspective but let's sort of talk about the sort of state of play at the moment um, you know the coronavirus the black swan event um, you give us your view on sort of where we're at with that right now from a market perspective 
Yeah, I, I suppose there's two things. There's, um, you can see that the market has fallen a lot. We've got a slide on that. Um, yeah, one of the fastest and, and largest falls um, that the stock market's seen. Um, I think when we talk about Black Swan event, it's something unusual, something's come from left field, something that a lot of people and, and a lot of market participants have difficulty getting their minds around. The market likes to put their, their arms around and measure something and as soon as they're able to measure, even if it's bad, as soon as they get certainty around the measurement of that, they can uh, then form a base to go on from. Uh, when, and it's much, uh, you know, corona is, is something new um, and we just don't know how, how big the dislocation will be and that uncertainty is, is playing havoc with market uh, valuations at the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, look, even if you can debate about the impact it's going to have compared to, I guess, um, influenza generally, I think the damage to the market is clearly evident and mm -hmm. you know, um, a market is a, a forecaster really, isn't it, for us? Yeah, it's, it's a lead indicator for where the economy is going to be in sort of six months, 12 months time and at the moment that is pointing to a period that is going to be challenging for, for, for businesses. Yeah, I think uh, the market is, is pricing in a mild recession at the moment and I think that, um, you know, that's probably, uh, you know, is, is a recession, is, you know, is a mild recession um, bad? Well, you know, it's priced in at the moment, you know, we just have to see how, how that pans out. A recession is two, two quarters of negative growth, you know, how big that negative growth is is obviously critical, um, you yeah, but I think at the moment it, the market is pricing in um, it's a, 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 a mild recession. Yeah, the next slide, um, now the state of play, you know, what, what does it all mean? So talk us through what you're seeing Yeah, so this, is, saying, this yeah. is probably important. Um, yeah, when we uh, when we see uh, the market's been hit, the the central banks have all moved, uh, which is a po big positive. They've flooded the world with liquidity. Um, they've made uh, money available um, from their point of view to um, to to the world financial systems. Uh, we saw the Fed reduce interest rates close to zero, um, and that's been replicated with central banks all around the world easing up liquidity to um, to allow that and that's important that that flows through. Another positive is said markets are showing value assuming a modest recession. The uh, the negatives I think as you know we've pro um, and we're starting to see this sort of uh, come through it's probably more required on governments and fiscal policy. Uh, we've seen um, the US moving, uh, the Australia looks like it's about to go again um, and this is very important that monetary and fiscal policy is coordinated and, and fills this demand gap that we're seeing. I mean, um, but let's, let's, let's just clearly talk about that sort of stimulus. So I think um, you know, if, if Trump's been criticised for one thing, and you know, people do criticise him for a lot, but um, you know, to date, his sort of economic um, record, you know, was reasonably uh, good. Uh, but I think he's been criticised recently. It's I guess the speed at which he's moved with regards to stimulus. Now there is talk of a, a one trillion dollar stimulus package at the moment. Uh, US. Uh, produces $22 trillion of, of output, that's about 5% stimulus essentially. Do you think that will be enough and, and you'd hate the job of allocating who gets what, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I suppose that, um, you yeah, know, I'd say, I, I think the, you yeah, know, the crux of it is that that picture on the right there, that's, um, that's my local um, Japanese sushi place on the Sunday night, usually that is standing room only to get a seat and that's my daughter in there, you know, it's, um, uh, that's that's it's it's getting the liquidity through to businesses like that, and and there'd be tens of thousands of businesses around the world which would be going through this at the moment, and you know how they how they survive. Can governments get the money into where it's needed, which is right down at the coalface, which uh, businesses are uh, you know people aren't going out, people aren't spending on on services around the world, and that's mainly I think the big companies will weather it. Um, you know, if we're looking at one quarter of, of, uh, of, of poor growth, I think the big companies will be okay. The small business, yeah, you know, that's where, um, you know, and that's what I think the treasurer here is 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 looking at. You know, I'm not the only one to come to this conclusion, obviously, mm. and Trump as well. You know, to try and get money down um, to these small businesses, which uh, you know have, have not got the balance sheets of big businesses, and so we don't sort of get a, a, a big negative reaction. That's where where it's basically got to go. Yeah. Um, and the federal government so far, look, I think, has has been on the front foot there. Um, you know, with in terms of like, some of the big things that the instant asset write off, um, you know, boosting cash 
for employers with regards to you know you have an opportunity to sort of reduce your, your POYG, or sorry, in, in your BAS by up to 25,000, 25, that would obviously keep cash in mm. in businesses and then payroll tax exemptions in New South Wales. I think other yeah. states are looking at that, potentially could have a you know a, a material impact. So there are some some benefits yeah. coming through, but I think the fact that they're looking at a further round of stimulus shows yeah. I guess the I guess the seriousness of the situation, doesn't it? That's right, yeah. And it has to it has to go down to the, the, the small business level and, yeah. and get them in there. I think that's they're they're aiming at the um aiming at the right, you know, they, I think it's it's uh, they are aiming at the right place and just how quickly they move is important as well. Um, you know, I think the the um, uh, the consensus in that I'm reading from, um, you know, the strategists around is uh, what do we need to stabilise? We need some levelling off in infections in, in Western Europe and the US um, and then also we need those uh, Credit spreads to stabilise and economic indicators to stabilise. I've got uh, you know a couple of charts to show um, credit spreads in perspective. Yeah, so from that point of view, it's probably yeah you know, it's probably a bit early. Yeah, you know, when we we think of where we are in the cycle, the, the financial markets move a lot quicker than the real world. But I think that you know if we look, at some countries have handled it very well, like China and and South Korea, Japan, look all now made uh, good progress on it see whether that can be, um, and it's very early days for the US, but you know, they can see what's coming and they are preparing for it, you know, and and, uh, and parts of Europe as well, Northern Europe. So yeah, maybe to move on to... Yeah, we might, we, might, we might use an opportunity, um, Sean, sure, we'll come back to some of the slides, which we will make, we make available as well, but we are getting a number of questions, which is fantastic. The first question is from Michael Collins, and his question is, are the companies selected for CIA's portfolio the underlying investments likely reduce their dividend payout as a consequence of the volatility associated downturn. Um, I think, well, I think that's yes. It's a matter of degree and matter of um, the spread. Um, our, yeah, we've got um, 48 companies in in CIE, which is you know purposely spread across uh, you know, a lot of a lot of sectors and a lot of companies. You know, and you know, uh, we would have thought that all you know those companies were selected with a high um, confidence that they keep their dividends. Um, what the boards, I suspect what the boards will do, will see um, over the next quarter or so, you know, they don't have to make a decision, well a lot of them don't have to make a decision until they declare their dividends in um, in August. Um, I think those at the more pointy end will um, will withdraw, with, will cancel their dividends for the half. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I was talking about this yesterday with Peter Swiss, so I sort of like thought out of those 48, Maybe I would suspect the vast majority, um, you know, 30 or 40 of them, I suspect, will keep their dividends or reduce them slightly. There will be some that will um, will reduce them more than that. Yeah, you know, we do have a skewing towards companies which um, have good balance sheets, have good cash flows. Um, the, the, each board will look at the cash flows over and see just how badly they've been affected by um, by the drop in economic activity, uh, you know, due to lockdown over the over the quarter, and make a decision. I suspect right at the death, you know, um, uh, of that. Excuse the pun, but it's like right at the end, they'll make a decision where how far the whether and how far to cut their dividends, um, with the view to try and maintain them as much as possible. You know, I, I think our companies are, 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 are very, you know, are, are compared to the broader market, are very strong, and I think that. Um, I would hope that the you know the vast majority will um, maintain their dividends. Though it you know that is a circular question that really depends how long this goes on for. You know every every hour I suspect a quarter will be okay. If, it, if we're sitting at, at August and we're still in the type of conditions we are now, then I think I suspect you'll see more dividend cuts. Our next question is uh, from Peter Griffin, and he's asking, do you have a graph of CIA comparison? Uh, against our peer, against the peer group, um, it's something that we look at quite quite regularly, and we will be providing sort of more more communication on this. Um, CIE being, I guess, a, an X30 mid cap income LIC. There's actually not a uh, you know clearly definable peer group like there might be for for other strategies. Um, we do look at a couple of benchmarks, the ASX 200 accumulation index, but that we found hasn't been uh, the best benchmark to sort of track ourselves against and. In recent times, we've published in our NTA. We've been looking at an X30 index, uh, which is a bit more comparable. Uh, we are looking. Um, there's another index which we've been looking at recently, which 
we will provide some more communication about this and future NTAs has been the, um, uh, I guess, a value, uh, the S&P value index. Um, so we're doing some more work on on that, uh, but and we'll we'll, 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 we'll uh, revert back through some of our, our our NTAs. But there isn't a clearly definable peer group based on the strategy in the space, which I guess is one of our unique sort of selling proposition. Uh, but I guess in terms of our, our share price performance over this period, uh, we have held up, um, you know, well compared to the, the, the peer group with, you know, the discount is, you know, sort of negligible um, at the moment. And, you know, we have outperformed the, um, the ASX 200 over, over, over the period as well by sort of, you know, in, in the realm of four to five, five percent. Um, so, but look, it is a moving feat and, um, you know, it's hard to sort of make calls on where we're, we're going there, but we have been pleased with how we've been holding up from a share price perspective, which is something that um, our investors should care about uh, the most. Um, the, um, yeah, so like that, that's the, the key point to, to talk through there. Uh, Pradeep, good to hear from you. Um, always nice to have you on the line. Uh, why not sell everything, Bertie, and, and move to cash limit losses and then move back at a later date? Yeah, I mean... I, Thanks, Renee. Yeah, I think that... Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't too long ago there was a, a lot of concern that we had too much cash. Um, yeah, it's, I think that, um, yeah, I, I worked with a, a, a fund manager who um, went to cash in the middle of the GFC um, so he could say he was in cash at the GFC, which was absolutely true. Um, but... I think that you getting back in the other side is is easier said than done, right? Because how do you how do you pick that bottom? You know, and making two two calls to get out and get back in is a lot more difficult than making one call. You know, and uh, you know, that guy ended up getting five years of, of poor numbers on the back of that that one call not getting back in. You know, because um, you know you, if you go to cash, you have to have a very very strict plan exactly how to get back in. Yeah, well, I think that um, you know, I, in terms of when you see you know absolute value on the longer term in in the market, there's always a risk you're going to get caught out. You know, um, as I said to uh, you know the team, what happens if we wake up tomorrow and the market's up 20% overnight? You know, what what do we do? Do we buy it back in if we hold 100% cash, or do you wait for it to come back? And you know, so you can see it gets um, uh, being able to pick, you know. It's all easy in hindsight, but um, I think we you know, I just look at the portfolio we hold. Are we happy with those stocks that they can get through this and come out the other side? Do we hold enough cash that we can fund any any um, raisings by any of our companies that run into a bit of trouble and they need some cash to get through? We're not expecting any, but if that happens, we have enough cash. We can uh, participate in any any issues and and probably participate strongly and buy buy more of it. Um, going forward. So I think that you know, going to cash and going back um, and, and to turn over whole portfolio is, 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 is risky business from my point of view. Mm. Uh, can you advise how much of the dividend will be affected? Um, so look, that's a, that, that's a fantastic question and I think every uh, LIC and, and you know, many, many managers in that income space obviously has to review their dividend policies at the moment and uh, we've got a board meeting this week where we're obviously looking at that. Um, next dividend is in is in good shape in terms of the profit reserves that we've generated and, and the yield that we've got through the market and you know we've been able to increase the levels of franking um, across all you know, the last couple of dividends that, that we've paid and that will continue to be a focus but at this point in time um, the dividend policy is being being discussed and if there are changes then yeah, we'll, we will make further updates um, on that. So, sure, we might move along um, to the slide on slide five. And you are at the CIE Investor Webinar, and we'd love more, more questions. Um, it's, it's your time, and um, you know we're here to to answer it. So, uh, feel free to to, to write in. Um, Sean Burns, you got a few charts here, which I think sort of you know talk us through. I guess the yeah. the, vol the volatility and the abnormal times that we currently operate in. Um, so severe market pullback. Uh, yeah, yeah. Slide, slide five. I think we're yeah, right. yeah. I mean, all this, I mean, the, the point of this chart, I'm sure you've all, all had a look at it, is just to see the, the how quick and how far the market has fallen. Um, you know, this is, a, a, this is a significant fall in, you know, going all the way back to the 92 recession. You know, uh, there's really only the GFC 
which has been um, a bigger fall, and the GFC was a lot more scarier than 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 this, um, you know, where you had basically the world banks all all broke. You know, so that's um, so yeah, you know, it's up there, and it's uh, yeah. You know, so I, I I'd say you know, on a longer term basis, you know, buying blue chip companies now is probably a good thing. But that's uh, that's the only um, point from there. Okay, look, credit markets. This is a really interesting one, uh, Burns. Can you sort of talk us through what? Well, let's try and sort of get back to basics here because I think credit markets are always hard to understand. But well, you know, what, what, what does this chart mean? But then what does the whole issue with the credit market mean for the equity market and for the man or woman on the street? Yeah, this is this is critical. So, you know, when we talk about um, money getting through to small businesses and businesses that have you know, cash issues being able to borrow, at um, being access to, able to access liquidity and able to access liquidity at a reasonable price. This is the index of the health of the of the um, the credit markets. So you can see what happened in the GFC. That's where the credit markets basically were completely um, you know, petrified. They they stopped you know and and the banks were too scared to lend to each other. You, know, you don't want that type of situation. You can see how that is, how quickly that's gone up, and this, how this um, index um, behaves. Um, you know, we're watching it every day, and uh, what we'd like to see is, um, and I think, you know, when you, it gives you the more clear to invest in equity markets, is is when you start to see this start to, um, or the riskier end of equity markets is when you start to see um, uh, this this start to uh, to turn over. Yeah, you've seen that. Yeah, that we've had a couple of you know the European crisis. You can see sort of to the right of the GFC around 2011, 2012, and then the the, the oil and the the Chinese slowdown um, collapse around 2015. So it's it's up with those type of issues at the moment, those type of um, crisis. So, uh, but I think that you know it is uh, uh, it is uh, very important um, that this uh, that that index stops around these levels and once it starts coming down I would say yeah that's when we're thinking like you know if we want to go out on the equity risk spectrum from this point that is the indication to that it's safer to do that um, and and to stick to quite defensive stocks but before that so that's that's how important that we sort of think um, that chart is so it's, it's a it's basically what uh, access to liquidity for companies at, at the riskier end, riskier companies. And the um, the fear index is, uh, or the, you know, the VIX is um, at record highs at the moment, which is not surprising. Yeah, this is uh, yeah. So this is a, a shorter term measure of, of uncertainty and volatility in the market. Um, and you can see, I suppose, a point here. It's it's right up at records. Um, uh, so this this. Um, so when we think about uncertainty for the all the reasons I explained earlier, um, you know, it's right up there with the GFC, which is, you know, was a it was a very life threatening event to the world economies, and and this one is um, causing just as much angst out there in the in the um, in the market at the moment. Again, we would like to see you know, see that come off at some stage, but you know, credit spreads, uh, I think, is is the real world thing that we are concentrating on. I might go through just um, you know and and talk a bit about the portfolio. Um, you know, the first point is the the portfolio is well spread, 48 stocks, which is which is a lot. You know, we we sort of have a, a soft limit of 50, so we're right up there. We've spread that, uh, you know, deliberately spread that out um, to to cover um, different sectors, different. You know, don't, not have too much stock specific risk. Um, you know. And looking there, I put each stock into a, a, a bucket, you know, so six different buckets there. You can see defensives, which are basically REITs, utes, and infrastructure, utilities and infrastructure, 30%. That's a big, big weighting uh, of, you know, that's the core sort of like defensive, um, what we would hope to be very stable. 12% in banks, that gives us a yield. Domestic cyclicals, 20%, domestic stables, 19 Growth, 13 We've been growing that, as, as you may remember, we, um, we wanted to diversify the portfolio into more growth. A lot of those growth companies have come under, um, you know, they have big valuations, they've come down. So, yeah, we're looking to imp increase those, but we will sort of stagger that over time. And resources are a small, small um, holding in, in, in CIE. 
I mean, the points, uh, I suppose the, the thing that I find like interesting and disappointing to some degree is that there's been a significant degree of interest stock correlation of returns. So, you know, you look at defensives down 20 from the peak, and this was done on the, the 13th of March. I, I rule this off. It's moving around from day to day. But now that's the same as domestic stables and, and you know, only a few percent better than domestic cyclicals. So you can see that, you know, the um, and the disappointing thing from that point of view is that, you know, the defensives haven't been as defensive as, as um, you would have wanted. So the sell-off has been broad based and, you know, every stock is getting hit. And, you know, so even those stocks which we think would be holding up well, they've done a bit better. But I would have thought they would have done, uh, that, that differentiation would be, um, it would be much larger than what it has, has transpired. So that's uh, that's uh, that's, uh, that's probably a part of um, you know, broad based selling across the market, selling every stock. You know, a macro, um, just uh, you know, people getting out of the market or quant funds or EFTs, etc., all liquidating across the board. Yeah, you know, I think that will probably, um, you know, uh, I would expect coming out of this, the defensives will be the first to improve and then basically follow uh, down into the domestic stables, cyclicals, and then uh, and growth will come back as well. I mean, I suppose uh, where we see this, you know, we're... A question uh, from uh, Paul, uh, Paul Perry. Okay, Paul, um, Sean, in, in, in light of the sell-off, um, you know, when is the best time uh, to be getting in? You know, what, 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 what is your approach to, 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 to getting back in the market and where do you see opportunity at the moment? I think you've got to have a, a plan or a strategy where you think, you know, if we come out of this, what what will the world look like? You know, I think that, you know, and, and, and this depends on how long things are going for, assuming it goes on for three months or so. Um, I think we end up in a world of, again, with low growth, low interest rates. You know, we, I think our defensive stocks, um, you know, some of, you know, once uh, yields stabilise, there's, they're often good yields now, um, uh, if we get stable, um, conditions, those yields will be extremely attractive. I think uh, uh, we're, in terms of adding the portfolio, we would like to add more growth stocks as they are. Well, I think that at this stage we're holding back just to see um, those credits. So we're buyers of defensive stocks, um, those stocks which are growth stocks or, or cyclicals, we're holding back until we see the credit market stabilise and then we'll um, increase our positions in in, in those, those stocks. As, um, uh, and we do move in in uh, you know baby steps. We don't sort of make a big big swing of um, uh, yeah. We move um, at small paces, and and but we will start adding those stocks. So that's sort of like the the, the broad strategy at okay. this point. Okay. Uh, I've got one more question uh, from uh, before we go. We are running out of time. Pradeep, will you reduce your management fee uh, at this stage? Pradeep, we haven't considered reducing our management fee, but you do ask us this question regularly, and we will we will take that on. On notice, and we will consider it. And, and, and thank you for for asking that. Um, Bertie, anything to wrap up? Um, I just uh, you know, iterate out. You know, our franking looks good. Looks like it'll be 100% for the next dividend, and we'll see what that is. I think that um, you know, uh, um, we will. You know, the, the aim is to pay out as much as we can in 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 income and, and dividends going forward. I think that uh, the stocks we hold, uh, I think, you know, are, are, are quite strong. Um, we are in a position, if any of our, our stocks do need funding, we don't see that at the moment, but if they do need funding, we're in a position to um, participate um, and not be diluted. And I think that once things normalise, you're going to um, get, you know, I'd be a buyer blue chips at the moment. I wait for credit markets um, to um, start to stabilise, improve and go out the risk curve. So that's um, that's basically the strategy. We've got a question from uh, Peter Griffin too, actually, and, and Leon as well. Um, Peter Griffin, how much cash are we on at the moment, Percy? Oh, it's around three percent. Um, I think that you know um, we're paid to be fully invested. It's a yeah, yeah, that's right. So we move around around five, but you know, also we had you know, um, you know, a lot of our stocks, as you can see, are sort of like defensive. We would hope that they would not move very much. You know, um, go there, there companies that don't go very up very much in the bull market, we hope they don't go down much in the bear market and just pump out cash. Mm. So they're like, um, you know, between um, cash and, and uh, risky stocks. Uh, and then a question from Leon around around the profit reserves and, um, you know, where, where do we stand in light of future 
dividend payment. So we've got the, the next uh, profit uh, dividend covered uh, with you know the, the likelihood of franking 100%, but that's still subject to board approval. And as I mentioned before, we're currently uh, reviewing uh, the dividend policy with the board, and um, we will. Uh, make an announcement on that um, in the near future. We might give you a call as well. Leon, thank you for your question. Well, that's all that we have time for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for, for joining us in these in these challenging times. We appreciate your support. We appreciate the trust you faith in us, the trust you place in us to, to manage um, your investment in, in CIE. And we're available at all times. You can contact me personally. I can contact my uh, contact uh, Tom Hickey in uh, direct distribution at any time. Uh, we will send a follow-up email of this webinar, the contact details available, uh, or you can email invest at contango.com.au or call us on 1300 001-750. Uh, thank you very much for your time and um, yeah, best of luck in this um, crazy world we live in right now.